What is up guys, it's your boy Gonzo and welcome back to a new video. As suggested by some of you in the Stropo link from two videos ago, today I'm gonna show you the basics of EQing for beginners. Also keep in mind I'm not an audio engineer yet, so take everything that I say with a grain of salt, just because I might be wrong, but you know, this is how I do it personally and you know, I'm looking to improve. So if you have a better understanding of EQing, please let me know in the comments below. So without any further ado, let's just jump into it so as you can see we have some stems for a track you might actually know it as the skype ear tutorial uh, and you can stream it on soundcloud if you wish to listen to it <laughs> Now we're gonna try to make the stems sound like the finished track. And now I'm gonna play the unmixed stems and uh, yeah, we're gonna mix them. So as you can hear, the frequencies are clashing. It, it just doesn't sound right. It, it, you know, too many things are going on and that's what we're gonna fix. So as I said, this is an EQing tutorial. I'm probably gonna be leveling some things, but if I'm doing it, I'm gonna do it within the EQ. So let's start with the first elements and then, you know, slowly EQ all of them together. So the first element is a bell and you know, it sounds like this. And if I apply an EQ too, Oh, that's not an EQ. And if I apply an EQ2 and play it, you'll see the wrong things about it. It's really prominent in uh, the mid ranges, and uh, you know, it can become annoying if those frequencies are too harsh. So, first of all, I'm gonna scroll down on this area to get this shape so we can actually do a hard cut. I'm also using the scroll button for this. So, now if I play it, it already sounds better. So by cutting the lows and the bass frequencies, we know that it's not going to bleed out. And I'm also going to adjust the mid frequencies and the high mids like this. So it's going to be a bit more subtle, but it still keeps, you know, the fullness of the sound, if that makes sense. So without the EQ, it's going to sound like this. And this is a good starting point. However, when I'm done with the other sounds, uh, I'm gonna play all of them together and then adjust the EQ just so they actually sound good together while playing together. Uh, because if you mix something by just listening to that specific thing, it might not translate into the actual mix when playing the whole track. Because it might sound good alone, but then if you play something else that has the same frequencies, it's gonna sound like it's clashing and it's not good. So let's keep it as it is for now and then let's go over to the next element. Now the next element is a choir, it's pent to the left and it's also at a lower octave. So it's pretty much a pad at this point. So that means we need to remove low frequencies. We're gonna be doing the same thing as we did uh, with the bells. I'm not gonna remove all of the low frequencies just so it still sounds full because I did this mistake when I first started EQing properly or started to learn EQing, I would cut all of the low frequencies, including the low mids, and that would make the sound feel really empty or just not right. So by keeping some of the bass frequencies in the low mids, uh, it, you still get the idea of the full sound. And this applies really well to a piano, which we're also gonna EQ in a minute. I could also slightly boost the treble so it gives it an extra clarity. You know what I mean? But you don't want to have it too much. Now, the next sound is, uh, I think it's the same choir, just one octave higher and uh, on the right channel. And we're gonna do the same thing pretty much. Although this one doesn't have that many low frequencies just because it's a higher octave, it doesn't have those specific frequencies. But I'm still gonna adjust the mids a bit and maybe slightly most, most boost the treble. So the choirs together should sound like this. I know they sound kind of awful by themselves, 
but they're mostly filler sounds so they just fill in some some empty spaces in the track now the next sound is this vocal thingy i could already tell that it has some low frequencies and some low mid frequencies that i don't really want to be as present so once again we're gonna do the same thing you can also uh, look at these dots they don't have to be four dots which is like the most abrupt cut out of all of them you can have it either one dot or two also i'm gonna take some of the mids away maybe like this And I'm actually gonna show you an example. If I uh, actually add another EQ and I do a hard cut on the low mids, it's gonna sound not good. It sounds really empty. Those low mid frequencies really make a difference. And now, uh, as I said, the piano, uh, it sounds pretty harsh as it is now. It has a lot of low frequencies, which I want to cut them out. But I also want to keep the low mids and some of the bass frequencies. So like this. But at the same time, I don't want it to clash with the 808. So by having some, some bass frequencies, but not too many, it's gonna sound perfectly fine with the other sounds and with the 808 instead of you know doing a hard cut like this kind of sounds like a broken radio or a really bad attempt at making lo-fi and if you have good headphones you can actually tell the difference like it's massive by even cutting like 40 hertz away it really makes it sound good and more full. So now if we play all of the sounds together, they should sound like this. And as I said, adjusting it while we're listening to them is a really good thing to do because you can actually get the idea of how the full mix and the final mix should sound like. Now, moving on to the drums. Personally, I don't really EQ drums. Uh, the only things that I'd actually EQ are, of course, the 808s. And sometimes, sometimes some complementary snares, if I feel like they have too much low end or they have some annoying frequencies, I'll just cut them out. But in this case, I'm not gonna do it. I'm only gonna, you know, EQ the 808. So now the 808 normally sounds like this. And uh, I want to cut the low frequencies. Now, when it comes to the bass, this is not like a written a rule, but a lot of people, and myself included, tend to do a hard cut on 35 to 45 hertz, just so you don't really want to have too much going on in the in the low end, just so you know it can be overpowering and it can ruin the song. <laughs> And uh, also when it comes to the 808, some people tend to just do an extra cut like this and cut it at like 400, 500. And it can work depending on, on the track itself. If you have really melodic 808s, then it's gonna sound a bit muddy, as you'll hear in a second. You know? So I usually do something like this. I actually kind of take away from the bass and slightly boost the low mids because when I'm mixing the 808 I want it to be hearable on a phone or on you know shitty laptop speakers so you can actually get the idea on on how it sounds like although you'll hear some notes kind of clipping they're not necessarily clipping but there there's too much going on in those frequencies what you could do like this specific note just add an extra EQ and slightly cut this part. You know, it's not gonna be as harsh, which is pretty good. And that's about it with, with the 808. I, I don't wanna go too crazy on it. Of course, it's gonna depend on how the dry 808 sounds like. If I wanna, you know, distort it, then I'm gonna add a Camel Crusher or Fab Filter Saturn, Saturn, I don't know. 
and then of course you'll have to readjust the EQ but as I said yeah this is pretty much it but I hope this video actually helped you guys out uh, maybe you actually got a better understanding on how EQing works and how the frequency range works it's really important when EQing a melody compared to you know uh, a bass line because the frequencies that are covered by the bass line should not be covered by the melody but as I said I'm not an audio engineer so I don't know how good these methods are maybe they're totally wrong so I'm not trying to you know spread bad information but this is how I personally do it and it works pretty well for now maybe in one year's time or five years time I look back on these mixes and I'm gonna cringe but hey you gotta learn right but yeah thank you so much for watching this video as I said I hope you guys learned something and if you have suggestions for me please let them in the link in the description it's a uh, poll link whatever and you can add your own custom suggestions if you don't have an idea you can maybe like someone else's idea you can vote for it and that's probably gonna be the next video or the next next video depending on what i feel like doing but yeah i'll see you guys in the next one peace <laughs>